Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be looking at Clockify and API Connector. It's a way of getting your data in from Google Sheets into, uh, from Clockify into Google Sheets. Um, for me today specifically, uh, obviously a lot of you guys are here to see information about Clockify. You can maybe just jump ahead just straight to that. But for most of my regular audience, you know, I do a lot of business tips and business growth tools and software tips, uh, things that can basically help you run your business. And API Connector specifically in terms of a business tool is one of the best ones. It's like one of my favorite things I'm using at the moment. I have been for about a year and a half, two years or so. And it's essentially a way for me to get data from anywhere into Google Sheets where I can manipulate it and see it in sort of like one single dashboard. So for instance, imagine you've got your whole company set up, uh, you've got Facebook ads, you've got Google Analytics, you've got uh, zero accounting, you've got uh, Clockify data, you've got it all sort of running all your different softwares. And as a a business owner, you don't want to be going into each of those different things uh, and, and pulling the information. So using something like API Connector, you can basically pull that data in, like uh, it refreshes automatically every hour or so. Um, it's pretty easy to set up once you get the hang of it. It's like a lot of similarities. Almost everything can do it, like every software out there these days uh, is has an API that you can connect to and pull it in, even some more like older school software. Um, and the, 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 the limitations are endless. I mean, I use it for like sending data as well out of Google Sheets. So it like brings it in, manipulates it, and then posts it to different uh, like sales channels, Amazon, Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, um, Take A Lot, uh, all of those sort of things. Yeah, it, it's immensely powerful. Anyway, so uh, this is what it is, Mix Analytics. There's a link in it below the video. Uh, you can basically pull anything in. Uh, you, it's a Google Sheets plugin, so you do have to um, you do have to come in and install it. And I mean, I think yeah, 860,000 users are using it at the moment. And I've always been immensely happy with it. I think though it is, it is tricky to use cause it's not, it's still API work. And like, there is no way to make APIs less API, <laughs> except like using something like Zapier or Integromat. So there is a little bit of complications with it. And like each API company is different. Like each software company has different structures and formats. Um, but they've done a really good job at, at simplifying that for everyone. Okay, so uh, let's jump in uh, to where you get your API key for Clockify. Um, you obviously come into uh, Clockify, you go to your, uh, up here, you go to your profile, profile settings, and then you come down here to get your API key. Uh, if you don't have one, just click generate and it should pop up there. Then next, you want to have a look at your, uh, your, your API docs for Clockify. And essentially, this is all the data we can, we can get. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's near limitless on how much we can uh, import, um, how much we can, yeah, like ev everything you could possibly want. Say you wanted user data, uh, here it is. If you want to do projects, here it is. You know, so it's it's really quite easy. To, like the, the the expanse of data we can get is immense. Anyway, so next thing uh, we want to go over to a Google Sheet, and now we can start actually getting some of that data in. So uh, for those that skipped the first part, welcome. <laughs> uh, okay, so what we want to do is go extensions, API connector, and open it up. Then we've, in this case, I've set up a couple, uh, set up a couple uh, program uh, requests. Um, but the first one, uh, if you don't have one, you're just going to go add new request. But I'm going to open up mine and show you what it looks like. Then you can see here, this is your URL. So first you select your method, get, then you have your URL. Uh, this is going to be your workspace ID would go in here then most of the time you're going to just change users to projects or to uh, different sort of uh, parameters with the user and then your page um, up to 100. I think you can go up to 1,000 even. Um, but I'll also show you a bit of the pagination if you've got more than that. Uh, content type, application JSON, that's uh, sort of standard. And then put an X API key and then paste in your API key. Simple as that. Destination sheet, it's going to be users. 
and then just name the request. And that's literally as simple as, it, you know, that's it. Um, so if I run this, it's going to uh, go to a uh, Clockify ask for that data. It's going to show them the key to say we are allowed to access this data. And as you can see, boom, the data is in. Um, it's as literally as simple as that. Uh, requests, then if you want to schedule that, then you add a trigger for users every hour and hourly we save that now every hour you're going to get an updated uh updated list of users brought into uh google sheets which i think is pretty cool manage triggers i'm going to delete that just so that i don't have it running forever after i forget about this video <laughs> okay uh so back to requests projects um, this is just a, a variation of the a get request for users. Like these are the simpler ones. We're going to get to more of the complex reports in a bit. Uh, you can see workspace ID, and then just at the end, it's basically just change projects. Uh, in this case, uh, page size, I've set it to 10, just to show you how the pagination works or paging works. Um, if you've got more than the amount of pages it's limited at, I, I believe it's either 100 or 1,000, um, then you can come in here and set it to page uh, 100 um, and then you want to bring in you want to select your page parameter as page your pagination is page parameter page and then page count up until two uh, if you make that two three four five then it'll bring in those ones ones or you can uh, you can basically bring it in until there is no more data returned which will sort of bring in all of the pages Okay, so this was clock right projects. Named it, where's it going? Projects A1, brilliant, let's run it. So it's only gonna bring two pages of 10 responses per page, so it's about 20, uh, one with a heading. Uh, so there we go, you've got it all in here. Uh, you can use this edit fields option, just as a side note for all of your things, and you can move it around uh, not like because a lot of the, the data is not going to be useful for you so you can just uncheck rows that you don't want and move them around and this and that so that's quite really quite nice okay so then we move on to detailed report the and like, this is the one that, that stumped me um and was quite complicated so if you guys are here because of the detailed report uh check it out uh we want to edit it's actually a post request that we are posting through we obviously have to get the URL first. Uh, there it is, uh, workspace ID reports detailed, and then uh, uh, your content and your API key. And then we've got to do this big post body. So a couple things to break down. So obviously I've got the date range, uh, date filter, you can page size up to a thousand. It's sorted by date, um, uh, totals are excluded, uh, sort order, ascending, uh, the export type is JSON, I think you have CSV, rounding is false, uh, amount shown earned, time zone, invoicing state all. So you can basically, and then obviously your client IDs that you want to, um, you want to bring in. So in, the, in this case, the report was so date, uh, specific client IDs that worked on specific projects is the sort of the, the parameters that I wanted. Um, and that's sort of it. it. This break thing, so in this case, I've got more than a thousand responses. So you have to post multiple bodies. So do this, copy it, and do another another response below it with page two and put this break in so that and then check this box to post multiple bodies then you set your response sheet and this and that so for me the hardest part was actually just setting up this layout and once i got this layout i kind of can reverse engineer whatever they did each time um, and clockify support was pretty helpful in uh, helping with me with a few bugs uh, and it was just a little bit of trial and error. 
Uh, it's not that intuitive, and I probably can't explain it much more than being able to reverse engineer different things. Like if you wanted me to change something like invoicing, something about invoicing, I'd probably just start tweaking all of these things between different options, um, true and null and, and false and this and that. It, it's a bit of a, um, it's just a, a bit of the process involved. So anyway, uh, what we can do is just check that and I'm going to run it and it will take a while because it's, it's quite a big uh, report. So I'm going to pause for a second. There we go. You can see it has come in and we've got our data dates, the, uh, the different projects that we were looking for, a, the client IDs that we were looking for and all the descriptions and things have been brought in. And uh, once again, you can set this up real time, then you can run pivot tables on this, you can run query formulas on this, you can uh, pull exceptions, uh, things where time is over a certain amount, um, billing is too much, billing is too low, you know, you can work out all your variance and fluctuations and things like that. Uh, so yeah, that is, this is really, really quite cool. Um, next thing is the summary reports. So if I go back here, summary, edit, it's just a little bit of a different structure uh, involved in it. You've basically got your workspace, workspace ID, and then instead report summary. Uh, once you've got that, uh, this body, it's also a post and the body layout's just a little bit, a little bit different. Um, date and then just like summary and then you've got a summary filter and you've got to put in your different things that you want to filter by group states projects group uh, sort by column group uh, orders then ascending json rounding false da 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 and then again client ids and clim project ids are the ones that i wanted to be included uh, like specific ones that i want to be included and give it a destination give it a name and select run All right, so there you go. You can see it's come in. Uh, obviously, you could work with this data a bit more and do whatever you want with it in terms of getting it, uh, getting it more usable and more like uh, visually aesthetic. At the moment, it's very raw, but that's pretty much the power of a tool like API Connector. And um, I'm not really a, 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 a like clocking hours sort of um, advocate or whatever. Uh, but the main part of this for me is to show you guys the API connector and that how like you can do this with everything like Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, 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 Telegram, you know, you can bring in messages, you know, it's limitless. Um, and then you can also send data by posting different things. So it's, it's really, really, you can do some cool stuff. Um, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, if you like the software, use my link below, API Connector. It is an affiliate link, so I get a bit of a kickback if you guys sign up with that, which helps a lot. Uh, helps, make, <laughs> helps, helps me make more of these videos, uh, not going to lie. And if you guys have any questions, just leave it in the comments. And also, if you have questions about API Connector, I mean, I mean, I like to think that I'm pretty good with APIs, but I'm not always that available to answer loads of questions. But at API, uh, at Mixed Analytics, there's a forum. If you ask on there, uh, the owner has always been super, super helpful. And the te their team, of course, has always been super helpful in answering just like all of my annoying questions about like my own projects. Like, oh, how do I do this? Uh, but then it's like it goes onto a forum, so then it helps other people down the line. So they're always happy to do that. And also, if you're trying to work out something with Clockify, they've actually been pretty good at helping uh, with some of the setups and layouts and structures of the requests and things like that. So, yeah, once again, if you guys enjoyed, like and subscribe and check you guys soon.